What's going on? Welcome back to my channel. So here I am with another plant video for all of you guys. That's because you're probably bored as hell and have nothing better to do than to watch plant videos. But to be honest, that is exactly what I do as well too, to kill my spare time. Especially during a time like this, you know, us all being quarantined and whatnot. Hopefully you're watching this at the comfort of your own home and doing your part to help flatten the curve. But uh, yeah, so in this house plant tour video, we are gonna do my main floor. The last time we did a house plant tour was the one upstairs in my bedroom. And uh, this time I'm also gonna show you guys how I go about styling my plants around my place. Uh, this way you guys can get a general idea on making sure that when you are wanting to have a lot of plants in your home, it doesn't look clutter because I know that is one of my challenge as a crazy plant guy is I want a lot of plants at home. I don't want it to look clutter, but at the same time, I wanna make sure that the plants are placed in an area that will thrive as well. Before we get this house plant tour started, if you have not hit that subscribe button, I have no idea what you're doing with your life. YouTube already knows you love plants with all your viewing history, so why don't you go ahead and do that. Uh, without further ado, let's get this started. For some context about my condo, it is about 800 square feet, 400 here on the main floor and 400 upstairs. It is one of those narrow styled condos which is about 35 feet long and only about 10 and a half feet wide which means I kind of have to leverage the perimeter in terms of placing the plants. The only source of natural lighting I get is that south facing window right there and although it is only on one side of my house, it is a south facing window which means I get a ton of bright lighting. So for example, if I was a plant and I'm standing right here and I can see the sky still, that means I get a lot of nice bright indirect light. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna start the tour here when you enter my place and we're gonna start on the left side where you'll see. So over here you have my wine rack slash home decor plant stand and for the most part, this area gets a ton of medium to bright light, especially during the summer and about low to medium during the winter. So typically I will have plants here that prefer to thrive in any lighting condition like a ZZ plants, but also those that prefer to be in more low to medium, like my Syngonium that you see here, and the Pink Splash Syngonium as well. Uh, you'll also have my uh, Haworthia set uh, that you guys see here, and then my coffee plant that I moved from upstairs to downstairs, and then this um, orchid that I recently just trimmed off the blooms because it just finished, and normally you want to trim off between the uh, node as well as the last flower where it came off and you want to trim it there so that way you can promote new flower stock. You'll also have here my uh, one and only few calatheas I have left, which is the furry feather. You guys are familiar with this one. I featured it in one of my house plant haul videos, but it has one of those uh, burgundy backs, uh, green foliage at the top, and then it feels uh, very fuzzy, like a, a furry feather, hence the name. And as well as I'll have some home decor stuff like this painting I got, I think from a street artist out in Finland, maybe like over 10 years ago. And then you have here a saxophone I got on Amazon because uh, I don't know if you guys were ever in band in high school, I was, and I played for like two years. And uh, a couple months ago, I really wanted to play again because I haven't touched one. So I ordered one off Amazon. It was really you know affordable. And I figured why not uh, try and pick things up again. My neighbors love me for it. They absolutely love me for it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> they hate me probably. But yeah, so this is kind of the area of my place where I have uh, my obviously uh, some of my plants. And um, you know, obviously I didn't want to put too many um, plants here because I didn't want to make it look too cluttered, but there's still a, a few more spaces where we can place a bit more plants. We're now going to step over here in the dining area. So over here you have my little two-seater cafe set and the plants that I have here on the centerpiece is this Raphidophora tetris parva. This is the fastest growing plant I have ever owned and it is such an amazing plant. Uh, literally this has shot up maybe six leaves since I've had them, maybe only about like four or five weeks ago. And uh, they do really, really well in medium to bright light so again this area gets a ton of medium to bright light during the summer times and as well during the winter they will do fine with uh, more of a low to medium I do have this beautiful pendant light here by Soltech Solutions uh, it is not only my dining room light but it is also a grow light which is perfect for this area especially during the winter months although I do use this in the evening for a lot of my smaller plants like my Alocasia Silver Dragon and my Philodendron Birkin uh, but yeah it has a really wide ratio when it comes to the diameter of the lighting so you don't need this to be really close to your plant it's perfect because you can adjust the uh, height of this pendant light but uh, yeah 
yeah, if you guys are looking for this, I'll provide a link in the description below with also 15% off your purchases by using my promo code. Uh, so now we're gonna head into the living room where you'll be familiar with some of my plants that you guys often see in my Insta stories. As you enter my living room space, this is where you get a ton of bright indirect light, obviously because of that south facing window. And over here in the corner is where you'll find my ficus altissima. This is a beauty. One of my favorite plants right now because of this green on green variegation. And again, you guys know I love ficus, right? Uh, but yes, very easy to care for as long as you give it a lot of bright indirect lighting and even a couple hours of direct lighting where actually what will happen to the leaves is this green on green variegation will turn more into like a golden green variegation. So. I might give this out a try. Uh, maybe during the summer, I might move this guy actually a little bit closer to the corner where you'll see that bop. And again, we'll, we'll get there. We'll talk about the bop when we get there. But next to it is obviously this string of hearts. And you guys know I talk a lot about my string of hearts. It is one of my um, favorite house plants, obviously. I, I say like every plant is my favorite, but I do have more of a soft spots for those plants that I've taken care of uh, when they were a little bit younger and smaller and then grown to uh, be pretty big and thriving really well like the string of hearts. So, about two years old now has been in the same spot uh, since I've gotten it and this is about maybe 10 feet away from the window so again gets a ton of bright indirect light but not so close to the window where you know it can't possibly damage the leaves through sunburn and not uh, dry out the soil a little bit quicker but uh, for the most part doing really really well in this uh, section right now so we're gonna enter into kind of like the media unit this is where I have my TV and some plants as well so when it came to the media and entertainment scent I definitely wanted to make sure it wasn't going to take up a lot of space as mentioned it's only about 10 and a half feet wide so I wanted to make sure that the TV wasn't sticking out so I mounted the TV against the wall got this very slim media console from CB2 where I can place some smaller plants on top of it and then at the bottom I can place a little bit more of the larger plants which also ends up hiding the cables and displays more of the plants and a few of the home decor stuff so the plants I have here at the top require a little bit more of the brighter lighting like this Hoya Carii single heart leaf uh, which by the way I never recommend you guys get one of these plants because they will not turn into a plant um, I mean unlikely anyway so I've had this guy for almost three years still a single heart leaf and then you'll also find here my ZZ Raven a single stock ZZ Raven that I need to repot this year as well and uh, hopefully it'll sprout up some new stocks but next to that is also this trade scantia and the new lilac uh, which is really pretty I've had this guy bloomed as well so he obviously needs to be repotted to a bigger size and then you'll also find there the spider plant uh, the jewel orchid uh, that you guys see here uh, surprisingly thriving really really well and uh, I'm actually uh, really surprised because normally these guys prefer a little bit more of the medium lighting and uh, their soil needs to be consistently moist so uh, doing really well in this spot for now uh, I keep the soil moist so I am very uh, on top of this one and then next to that is a few cuttings of the goldfish vine as well as this oxalis triangularis and then some cuttings of the neon pothos as well as a monstera dubii that I am going to uh, try and experiment getting this guy to root a little bit faster because it's taking a while so those are all the plants I have on top of this media console and people have asked me do I move them when I want to watch TV and the truth is I don't move them if I want to watch TV that's even if I watch TV because I hardly do uh, but for the most part I probably prefer to look at the plants than the TV so underneath that is obviously more of my larger plants you'll find there is Sansevieria whale fin my ponytail palm another Sansevieria whale fin and a few home decors here as well as this minion and then you see that little uh, cacti uh, there as well uh, but yeah so now we're gonna enter into that corner space where you guys see the bird of paradise as well well as my uh, Pelia peperomio this. So this corner is obviously prime real estate. It gets a ton of bright light as well as a couple hours of afternoon direct sunlight. So the plants I do have here are those that can withstand that kind of lighting like the Bird of Paradise, the Pelia peperomiotis, and the Golden Pothos. In addition, because it's a corner space, I want to make sure that this is where I can place a lot of my larger plants. I can't have them obviously in the middle even though I want to. So I have the Bird of Paradise here and you can see that I have different levels and different height of how I place my plants. I have the golden pothos which is more down here on the floor on the moss pole and I do want this guy to climb up the bird of paradise is obviously further back which is the tallest plant and gives a lot of that height and ideally I want this plant to kind of hang over and then you have the pilia here on this plant stand that gives a bit more in the medium height so ideally I want this corner to be a little bit more full and lush so it kind of feels like you're enclosed into a jungle and that's exactly the same vibe I'm going for over there in the corner so this corner obviously gets a ton of bright light as well and even a couple hours of morning direct sunlight you'll see here my large fiddly fig tree that I've 
had for over a couple years now and for the most part he's doing just fine sitting here soaking up the sun and not necessarily giving me a ton of new leaves but that's because I'm probably not giving it the kind of humidity it wants so I definitely want to make sure that I miss this guy a little bit more consistently this summer I do water this guy maybe once a month and uh, so far that's enough for him in his pot below there you'll actually find that I have a couple of shamrocks or axalis triangularis I have the purple one and the green one as well these guys love a lot of bright light and again even a couple hours of that morning direct sunlight doing really well there and then next to it is obviously my large aloe vera that you guys see here similar to the string of hearts this one has a special place in my heart only because I raised it when it was such a tiny pup a few years ago and it's obviously grown to this size has produced its own pups and also repotted and propagated that so definitely check that video out and then next to that are these alocasia bulbs that I'm trying to wake up this spring and this summer. I took these guys back last year, especially the alocasia regal shield that I chopped off. I now regret it. It was such a beautiful plant with its large leaves that you guys see here. I'm hoping these alocasias wake up soon so that we can grow and fill up the space a little bit more. Uh, because again, I'm trying to go for that feeling of you maximizing my corner space and having nice tall plants at different levels where it will kind of feel like you're you're in a jungle where it's hugging you, right? So that's kind know the vibe I'm going for when it came to the corner of my space uh, because obviously uh, I want to have a ton of large plants but like I said I can't have them in the middle of the uh, coffee table for example which by the way that's where we're gonna go to check out the next set of plants so when it came to my coffee table I wanted to also approach it similar to like the media stand where it wasn't going to take up a lot of space it wasn't so wide I want to make sure that I had enough space to obviously place plants on top of it because this is prime location gets a ton of bright indirect lighting but also have the bottom a bit more open so that that's where I can put like my remote or my books uh, but the top is obviously four plants so here you'll find my uh, philodendron birkin which by the way this guy is really starting to grow on me at first I wasn't so excited when I when I got him but every new leaf is much more beautiful than the previous one and that pinstripe variegation is is such a beauty and I mean I can't get over it now I'm really looking at it every day and I'll be like why did I not fall for you I guess it's like you know when you like someone and you start dating them you, at first you're like eh, you know you're all right and then the more you spend time with them the more like all right all right i'm feeling you but definitely a plant that uh, uh i wasn't feeling and now i uh, see i can't even stop talking about it okay next to that is this peperomia pico banda uh, needs to be repotted uh but peperomia as you know i find them really surprisingly hit and miss sometimes they're easy sometimes they're not uh, and i think for most peperomias uh, from my experience you kind of just need to stay on top of them uh, when it comes to watering don't let them dry out completely and if they need to be repotted repot them because uh, they don't do well being root bound here you have my alocasia silver dragon another one of my favorites i've always wanted to have uh, an alocasia silver dragon and this just has a new leaf that uh, finished unfurling when it comes to a new leaf they typically start off like green and then over time they'll have that silver uh, shimmer to it so really cool looking plant and then here you have my jade satin syndapsis so this guy i removed from the larger plant and i want to separate them because they were extremely root bound uh, so doing really really well now that they have a little bit more room for their roots you see here some cuttings of my string of hearts and my pearl and jade uh, pothos and then this guy right here is my thai constellation monstera i am so excited about this one because for those of you guys who's been following my houseplant journey for a while you know i got this guy when it was just a tiny little plant about over two years ago i got two of them and they were doing well they were thriving and then sometime last year they got attacked by thrips i think they got it from my other monstera and uh, I did everything I could to try and, and rid of them. And if you guys have ever experienced thrips, you know how challenging it is to get rid of them. I did everything by ladybugs, insecticide soap, and my last resort was neum oil and uh, I went really overboard where it kind of damaged the, a lot of the leaves I lost a lot of leaves plus on top of that it went dormant for a while and it wasn't showing any signs of growth until about maybe a couple of weeks ago where one of the vines you know had the new leaf peeking through and then eventually it is now has this brand new beautiful leaf and i'm so excited about it again because i mean man some plants obviously you got to keep fighting for when they get attacked especially if they're one of your favorites and um uh, this one was definitely worth fighting for because again similar to string of hearts the aloe 
you know, the, uh, the Pelia peperomiotis. Uh, when I have a plant that's very small that I took care of to a, a plant this size, uh, I mean, you, you don't, you don't want to give up on them. You definitely do not. But, uh, yeah, so a lot more space here on the coffee table you guys can see. And I think I'm getting a lot, well, actually, I know I'm getting a lot more plants, uh, from Crystal Star Nursery that I'm so excited to have in my hands <laughs> and I can't wait, but, uh, definitely going to be a lot of space here to uh, place some of those plants. Now we're going to move over to this corner and, uh, my little workstation there. Uh, which I'm spending a lot of time uh, obviously given everything that's going on but uh, yeah so let's go check it out so over in this side of the wall you'll find here my Monstera Deliciosa on the CPG plant stand and next to it is obviously this Peperomia Frost now this Monstera Deliciosa is actually not the original one I got from Walmart. It is my second one and unfortunately it also got attacked by thrips last year. So I actually had to cut a lot of the vines back and treat it as much as I can with insecticide soap, neem oil, and ladybugs, and uh, even peroxide to kind of clean out the soil. Uh, so it's doing a little bit better now. This area again gets a ton of bright indirect lighting even during the winter season. So, uh, so far so good in terms of location. I only have to rotate this guy every now and then so that way it doesn't lean over on one side because as you guys know plants tend to follow the sun and I only have uh, windows on one side of my place. This is my uh, bookshelf slash desk that I also got from CB2. Similar to the media unit I definitely wanted something that was slim and that I can mount against the wall and this space gives me enough room to obviously place my keyboard, my monitor, and my laptop and there you'll see my Synapsis Trubii Moonlight, one of my favorite new Synapsis that I got and then on the shelving here I have some of my camera gear as well as some of my trailing plants because when it comes to bookshelves I do like having trailing plants uh, you know sit on the top and then have the vines trail like this pearl and jade and then you'll have a couple of sansa bears up there because uh, they do pretty good in any lighting but uh, yeah so still a lot more space to obviously place a bit more plants all right guys so those are all the plants you see here on the main floor there's about like 50 or 55 you guys can see there's a little bit more space for me to add plants like on my coffee table or on top of that bookshelf slash desk I was actually also thinking about adding another shelf here against this wall because I do want to add as much plants as I can at the same time making sure they don't look clutter more importantly that you place them in an area that will thrive and do well hopefully you guys enjoyed this little plant tour plant styling video enjoy the rest of your week stay home stay safe and we'll see you guys soon peace